This is the Pythonic Accountant, and today I'm doing a pretty fun follow-up on my last video where we used traditional Python to pull down a PDF file in memory and convert this PDF file into a table. Here is what it ended up looking like. We got the vendor numbers, vendor names, invoice date, due date, invoice amount, net amounts, and description, and we were able to confirm that the total net matched up to the total on the uh, sheet. So 22,476,31 matched the total at the bottom, 22,476,31. So at the end of the last video, I said, I wonder if we can do this using generative AI and not have to deal with all of the, you know, slightly complex regular expressions that we used in order to convert this. So that was the, the regular expression here. And the reason why it's really interesting to think about that is you may have different lists of invoices or different actual invoices coming in different formats and if you don't know what the format's going to be you don't want to have to rewrite regular expressions each time. So let's take a look and see what I've got so far. This isn't finished yet so I'm going to catch you up to speed on where I've got so far and then see if we can actually get it working right. So first off I'm in Google Colab so this makes it easy to pip install and uh, install libraries uh, underneath the hood. Um, so basically this sits on top of like a Linux environment. And so first we're installing the OpenAI in PDF to image libraries. Um, OpenAI is going to allow me to interact with OpenAI's API and PDF to image will allow me to convert the PDF file to an image that I can upload into OpenAI. Um, this next one is installing a library that's required as part of the image uh, library, the PDF to image. So next we're doing our imports. Um, not going to go through each of these, but this one is a really important one. So you do have to create a secret key. Um, and with the secret key, and you have to give it notebook access, you have to name it specifically, um, well, I guess you can name it whatever you're going to call it here. But I named it OpenAI API key. The value here is the API key that I have from the OpenAI environment. Um, and you can create your own OpenAI API key if you have um, an OpenAI account that you've set up for uh, API access. And giving a notebook access is required so that way you can access it here. And this is the way that you would access it. So from Google Colab, import user data, which I did here. And then the user data.get secret name, you just have to update it to user data.get, the actual name of what the uh, name is there in the environment. And so that's what makes it accessible here in this environment so I don't have to have my API key out in the wild. So this is using the brand new model GPT-4.0 which can process images and it's quite good. And we're then creating this client. Um, this is setting up the uh, completion and what this is doing is um, showing us, let's just make sure it works. It's going to um, ask, for, <laughs> ask for AI to give us the response of the question, hello, could you solve two plus two? We could change this and say, hello, could you solve world hunger? And um, that'll be fun to see what it says instead. It'll probably have kind of a snarky response of saying like, I can't solve it, but here are some things you can do to help it. <laughs> Obviously the response is a lot longer because the question is much more complex, yeah. Solving world hunger is an incredibly complex issue that involves numerous factors, including logistics, blah, blah. While I can help provide insights, it's important to recognize no single answer completely solve world hunger. So harder question than two plus two, but that's okay. Let's carry on. So now we're gonna put the URL for the PDF file right here. And then we have um, some functions we're gonna set up that will um, help us here. So first we're creating this encode image, which is going to take the image and encode it into a format that can go directly into the uh, API call. And then we're going to um, fetch the PDF content. So what that means is it's going to actually pull down the PDF information from that website. So it's got to download the entire PDF file, convert it to bytes, and then convert from bytes to images. Now this next section, what I'm doing is a um, couple things. So first, I'm just grabbing the image from page 17, and then, because it starts at zero, and then we're going to encode that image into uh, base64 using this uh, function here. Then we're going to um, get, try to get a response. So we have this prompt here. It says, you're a helpful assistant that responds in JSON format. And then what we're actually asking it to do is uh, review the PDF page, extract the vendor line information, providing the following columns of data. And then I've given it some information about how I want it. So these are the names of the columns, same as how I had in the previous video. 
and just giving it a context that this is a three digit ID so it doesn't accidentally pull um, you know like the the voucher number by mistake that it did that the first time so I had to specify this and then to give it an example format so if it provides it in this format I'll be able to read it into uh, pandas easily and so let's go ahead and run this and oh and I also tell it to strip out sometimes it'll start with like the back tick JSON and the back tick at the end so I don't want that so let's go ahead and have it run so first it is sending that image of that single page to OpenAI along with this prompt now OpenAI is you know processing it and thinking about you know how to answer this question using the image and the prompt request then when it comes back it's going to save the response back into this output variable and then I'm going to print the output but once the output variable is saved I'll have it accessible that I can then run it down here and then I'll look at the data frame so it does take a little bit of time so if this is a process where you have you know tens or hundreds or even thousands of pages this is probably not the right solution to doing it so um, you know kind of an interesting thought experiment right now not pr practical for a production in the long term at least in the current state uh, but still I think it's interesting to see you know that it works and how it works okay so perfect we have our response back in JSON format um, now I'm going to show you an issue that we were running into we'll see if it's still an issue here let's go ahead and convert this to a data frame and print the data frame and let's see what we get here so United Parcel Service Software Technology let's just kind of spot check these United Parcel Service Software Technology LLC it should be 200 and 202 200 202 that's good I was having issues with the dates before let's see if the dates are correct so 324 22 and 42422 and 32422 and there yeah here's a problem that's supposed to be 42422022 but it came in as 62422 i suspect that the ai uh, the image quality is somehow being degraded as it is um, you know kind of converted from a pdf to an image so it's possible that i was looking at this from like you know this level of quality or whatever it's not picking up that six properly. So that tells me there may be other errors too. So that's where I wanted to take a, a different approach here. Uh, well, not a different approach really, but modify it a little bit. So instead of a ping file, we're gonna try a JPEG. And I haven't tried this yet, so we're gonna see how it works. And also we're specifying a higher DPI. And so hopefully that will um, allow us to have a slightly better output. It may not work. In which case I will say, you know what, we're going to go the traditional route here, at least in this specific case, until we're going to until we are able to get better, consistent quality output. Um, but let's see what happens. So again, this t might take a little bit of time because it's going to do the same thing it did before. Uh, I don't know if having the higher quality image will make it be quicker or shorter. You know, maybe it'll be shorter because it's easier to read it, and so the quality is better. I have no idea. But we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, and we have the output. Um, so full disclosure, I paused it so you wouldn't have to sit and watch uh, the whole thing run. So uh, it took an extra probably 30 seconds than what you saw. So let's go ahead and uh, I can already see it. Looks like the date still probably didn't come through correctly. But let's just see what we got here. And we'll at least check the total from a dollar standpoint, see if that matches up. So here's what we got. Um, yeah, the 324 and 424 really should be 324 and 624. Uh, let's check a couple more dates, 818, 22, 823, 22. And we got eight, yeah, 16, 22, 822, Yeah, those are off a little bit. Um, let's, let's see if the amounts came through. I don't know if these are amounts or strings. Looks like they came in as amounts. So that's good because they didn't have a comma. Um, so we may not have to change the way that we um, analyze this. So let's just do a sum on the net amount and see what the total is. PF net amount dot sum. And the verdict is, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's still a string. So <laughs> DF net amount. Uh, let's see if we can do this in, memory, in, uh, in line as type. Uh, float dot sum okay 22173.31 and 22 uh, it's close not exactly right so we probably had almost all of them read correctly but a couple of them read incorrectly so 
Turns out this is not the right approach, is taking the image and processing it. So let's just do one more thing here. I'm gonna take, um, I know we can actually grab the text, but instead I'm just gonna do it this way because I'm too lazy to copy the code. And I'm gonna say um, PDF text equals, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab the code that we had before from the processing. And we're gonna do this. And we're not gonna have an image here. We are just doing the file. Now where does the image come in? Okay, here's the image. So I think if I delete that, it might work. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. Last attempt, because if we don't need the image, it may be better just with the text. So you helpful assistant response. So review this PDF text, extract an example. Okay, then instead of this, I'm just gonna leave that out. Hopefully that'll work. And then I'm gonna say uh, PDF text. And this is the PDF text up here. I'm just gonna insert that in through an F string. So the beginning of this is here and the PDF text. Oh, it's not gonna like these. So let's just do double curlies. So it knows to escape those. And then PDF text is gonna be PDF text. All right, let's see if this works. I'm not sure, but hopefully it will. Didn't like that. Single is not allowed. Oh, geez. There we go. Try that. This should be quicker because it's a lot less data. It's not sending the image. It's just sending the text to it. Um, still has to take a little bit of time to process that large string that I sent. But again, it's it's got a lot less that it has to work with. Again, I don't know if this is going to work, but I guess we'll just wait and see. So let me go ahead and get the code from up here to grab the response. And let's see what it gets us. Because this could be another really compelling approach to using um, you know, Python plus Gen AI as a solution to this, as long as the information in the page is in you know, the right format and it's able to read it correctly. It's taking longer than I would expect, so let's see what happens. All right, here we go. This is gonna have a better chance of being accurate, I think. I already can see the dates look right. 3-24-22, 6-24-22. So it's not trying to view it. It's actually just looking at um, the text that I gave it. So let's go ahead and just check that net amount because I think the dates are looking good. 8-18 and 8-23. 8-18 and 8-23, heck yeah, all right. Now, we have the commas in there, so I'm gonna steal the code from this guy just for fun to get rid of the commas. So that's my convert number code. And this is my convert net amount code. And now I'm just gonna do that sum. This should work, I'd be surprised if it didn't. So 227631 and 22. 47631. Okay, there you have it. So what we've learned here is you can get the image recognition working. You can get it working pretty good, but not perfect. Definitely not something I would rely on from any kind of accounting automation standpoint because it introduces uh, more errors than I would like, at least in this example. There may be other ways to, again, improve that quality of the image that I didn't try, so that could help. Um, so definitely worth experimenting with. But for now, if you have a PDF like this that has you know, a structured table format, it's easier to just go ahead and, and you know copy and paste. Or in the other case that I did in this example, you can pull it down and extract the text using traditional Python methods. But here you can see we didn't do any sort of regular expressions. We fed that in um, as a string to OpenAI and said, hey, give me this in a structured format. It came through. The math worked, so that's pretty exciting. Well, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe and like the video, and we'll see you at the next one.